All right, it is time to look at the inside of the HD2. I'm not gonna get through the how to get to this point. This is just basic uh, disassembly skills uh, out of the case. So you got three brass nuts up there. You use the appropriate uh, tool to uh, remove those. There's uh, four screws that hold the uh, case to the uh, radio itself, and then you just pop the uh, bottom out. So again, I'm not gonna go through that. Uh, if you've done any disassembly, that should come pretty easy. Um, one thing that I will say is if you do have a legitimate reason, such as maybe breaking an antenna connector or a volume knob off and you want to fix it yourself, if you do go through the disassembly process, make sure that you remove all of the screws first before you remove the orange gasket. And I'll tell you why in a few moments. But uh, you basically have 10 screws, three down here, the bottom by the uh, Bluetooth chipset, two over here, one with a ground clip, two more at the mid. Uh, this screw right here uh, goes through to the back side of the radio, which I'll show in a few moments, uh, which will also need to be removed. Uh, here you will also have to remove the heat sink uh, for the RFPA, and then you have three more screws up here at the top, one with a ground point. And then finally, if you do need to remove the PCB, from the board itself, uh, you will need to desolder this point right here, which is the center pin for the antenna connector. And the antenna connector has its own two screws. So again, let's say if you broke your antenna connector and you wanna fix it yourself, this is really easy. You can just unsolder this and remove these two screws. You can ignore everything else, but for the most part, if for some reason you wanted to look at the underside of this board, you will need to uh, desolder the antenna connector. So uh, this is the GPS version of the HD2 that we're looking at, as noted here by this uh, little sticker. And then I thought this was curious, um, this QR code, and then um, here's the manufacturer date, 2023 of December. So um, there's that. And if we want to look at what that QR code read, uh, this is what I got. Don't know if this is going to be specific to my radio or not. It's not the serial number, so I'm not too sure what this number means. Maybe somebody will find that out in the future. So if you do open your radio, I'd be kind of curious. Scan your QR code and see if you get this number or something else. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the backside of the faceplate. Uh, my theory is that this is probably shared with the HD1, given that this has a 2022 of December uh, version number so pretty confident this is probably the same as the one on the HD1 right above it is the GPS and do yourself a favor if you are in the market for an HD2 just buy the GPS version it's just a few dollars more I think you'll just be better off don't try to save a few dollars uh, it'll certainly help in the resale value if uh, you decide to uh, send it off to somebody else uh, here's the two ribbon connectors that uh, have to be carefully disconnected from the other side of the radio. And here is the GPS antenna. Uh, it's curious how they positioned it. Standard ceramic type of an antenna, just glued in place. And this is on the left side of the radio. So here's the uh, PTT button. And so this is where the uh, GPS antenna uh, lives. And now let's go and take a look at all the screws removed. So here we have the uh, heat sink uh, compound, the thermal compound, uh, after removing the, um, the heat sink there. And you can see all the screws were removed. Now one thing is when you do disassemble your radio, um, there's two little orange clips underneath here. And if you try to remove your gasket that runs the perimeter of the radio, you might end up tearing this bottom part. So do yourself a favor if you do need to disassemble your radio, take out all the screws, and then you can just gently lift this bottom part up and pull this out instead of ripping it like I did. All right, so this is how you uh, disconnect the PCB from the radio itself once you've taken out those 10 screws as well as desoldered the antenna connector. Finally, you take uh, out the screw that goes to the positive terminal of the radio. 
and uh, just unscrew it. That should be pretty easy to do. And uh, for those playing along at home here, uh, here is the serial number of the radio that I have violated the manufacturer's warranty on. So um, D21110276, that's my serial number. So do what you want with that. All right, so now that we have the uh, PCB outside of the radio, here is the underside. And again, as I disassemble this, there was a lot of extra thermal compound. Uh, some of it pulled out and dripped. So before I reassembled things, I did clean this up. So just be careful. Uh, they really put a lot of thermal compound uh, over here at the RFPA. So if you do this, just try to clean it up. You don't want this accidentally shorting it out, any of these uh, passive components uh, like this. So we're going to focus on a couple areas uh, in this video. Up here, my uh, commentary on the front end, and then you have some of the important silicon bits down here, which I'll uh, review at high level. All right, so the most important part of any radio, I think, is what's called the RF front end. So this is where all the filtering happens, both for receive and transmit. Um, I think it's overall designed pretty well. Uh, here is where the antenna connector is just for uh, reference. Um, but you can see you got the usual uh, assortment of capacitors and inductive coils here. I think they probably could have changed some of these values to lessen up some of the harmonic issues that many of us are already seeing, or maybe even add in an extra pole or two of filtering. So just my thoughts, uh, hopefully this makes its way back to uh, Redivis and maybe they come out with a slightly improved version if they decide they want to get more serious about putting out a quality product. And I think so far, the disassembly of this, just looking at the, the build of it, it's pretty high quality. I think that just could have been one thing that I'd recommend. Uh, down here, you have the HRC 7000, same chipset that you're gonna see in pretty much most other uh, DMR uh, radios like the Anytone, Alinkos, uh, out there, handheld or mobile. So this is by now pretty common across most DMR radios. And then you have some of the memory so this is a 512 uh, unit right here. Windbond is uh, one of them. So you have more than enough capacity as it relates to uh, storage of contacts and whatnot. And then up here, we have a uh, 181846. This is a uh, SDR chipset that's super common in almost uh, all radios, it seems, these days. And um, this copper track right here does mesh with uh, part of the chassis of the radio. Uh, I don't know. I'd be kind of curious if they would have put separate shielding over this. Uh, maybe that could uh, limit some internally generated noise or not. But again, I think this is pretty pretty good manufacturing process and standard uh, that they have in the, uh, the HD2. Uh, here, as we wrap things up, here's the other uh, part of where things get stored, made by Giga Device. That's uh, additional storage. And then uh, you have up here, this is the real-time clock battery, if you were wondering. So I'm sure probably after a few years, you're ready for a new, bat uh, new radio. But if you're not, and your radio is no longer keeping a good time, uh, this might be something that could be replaced. But again, most likely, um, you're probably not going to be using this radio for, <laughs> for that long. And then uh, what else could we look at here? Now, we already talked about the 1846. We already talked about the memory, but yeah, I think uh, hopefully this gives you a better idea as to what's on the inside of your HD2.